Joe and Justin here today. We are checking out When I Come Around by Green Day, an all-time pop-punk classic. Really great one for beginners that are checking out their power chords as well. I'm going to take you through a fairly easy version, and then I'm going to show you a little bit more of the detail that you can get into if you want to get into the little muted hits and subtle things like that. Really nice, easy solo as well that you might want to get into. First thing, you need to know is that it's in E flat tuning. Now I'm still in standard tuning. So if you want to play along with the record, you need to tune down a semitone. If you want to play along with me now, we just stay in, in normal tuning. So let's start off by checking out the chord progressions. So the first chord that we need, G power chord, making sure that the first finger is in the third fret of the thickest string, that's the note G, where the chord gets its name from. Uh, third and fourth fingers go two frets higher on the fifth and fourth strings. Also really important, that the thinner strings are muted. You want to be able to play through all of the strings and just hear the notes for that power chord. The next chord we need is a D, exactly the same shape, so you can kind of lock your fingers and move it up. But the first finger is now on the fifth string. So fifth fret of the fifth string, making sure the tip of the first finger is muting the thicker string. That's real important. Third and fourth fingers stay in the relative positions to the first finger. That's two frets up and the next two strings down. Again, you want to be able to strum all of the strings there and muted thicker string, three notes, and muted thinnest two strings. Super important there on the D. Now the next chord, for a if you're a real beginner and you're just learning power chords, you can just use an E power chord. Exactly the same shape as a D, moved up two frets. If you listen to the record, you will, however, hear that it's actually an E minor chord. All of the chords are power chords in this song, except for the E minor. To do the E minor, you just put the second finger down in the kind of in between where the fingers go. It's relatively easy to play this one. So it's the eighth fret of the second string. You still don't want to hear the thinner string though. So you've, you're not doing a proper bar chord. The first finger is still muting that thinner string. So the first finger is muting the thicker string. Seventh fret, ninth fret, ninth fret, eighth fret, and then muted thinner string. And then we go down to a C power chord again. So muted the thicker string, three notes, muted the thinnest two strings. First finger being on the note C now, which is the third fret of the fifth string, exactly like the D was, just down two frets. So real beginner, you can be playing G, D, E, C, all power chords. If you've got a little bit more dexterity in your fingers, you want to try just here, adding the minor note in here with the second finger, and then going back to the C. Sometimes I think I'm hearing a C major, like a proper uh, bar chord there. It could be a couple of guitar layers going on. The other chord progression that we have, relatively simple, open A power chord again. We're not playing the thicker string here. You should be able to avoid it. If you want to, you can use your thumb to mute the thicker string, but I'd kind of recommend more just being accurate with your picking there for the A. And it goes to a C power chord. So A, C, back to A. If you're struggling with any of this power chord stuff, do check out the specific lessons in my beginner's course where I go into how to play them in great detail, how to learn where the root notes are, how to mute the strings, make sure your fingers are positioned correctly. All of that sort of stuff is covered in those courses. So check that out if you're struggling with any of these chords. The recommended starting point for the rhythm would be to use some palm mute. So using the edge of your hand just right near the bridge there, you do two down picks with that heavy chug and then lift your palm mute off play the full chord. So one and two. Mute, mute, hit. Real common rock thing. One and two. Then the next chord, exactly the same pattern on the D. When we come to the E minor, we have one and two and three, four. So one and both downs. Slide the chord down and then play on the D. Sometimes I feel like I'm doing a little bit of a mute there. One and two and one and. There's a little bit of mute during the transition. But other times, if I leave it off, I hear the chord glissing down with me. 
both of those things work really well and I don't feel like either one of them is right it's kind of a mixture of the two you can use a little bit of the palm mute there there are multiple layers of guitars on the original track so let me play through this slightly simplified rhythm for you first of all a few times to make sure you catch it so three four one and two three If you want to get a little closer to the original recording, there's this little muted hit that happens just before the G, the C, and the E minor. So you get this sl real slow, two, three, four. This little... Now the little is happening really where the transitions fall. So you end up having this click G G G. So while I'm doing that little click click, it's the transition from the G click click C click click D minor D four click click the little click click going into the G. It's real subtle, but for me it makes it quite a difference on this kind of riff. Okay, real simple, just all down strums. One and two and three and four and C and two and three and four and A, two, three, four. One and two and three, four. Four is a mute. One and two and three. Actually, it's kind of immediately after the three. One and two and three. So I'm just lifting the power chord up and using my hand to mute. Now there's a little riff there that goes little bass riff. Uh, I always feel like I want to go a little slide down there, so I go A. But that little is not on the record, it's just something I feel like I want to do because I'm used to hearing the bass going, the little riff there going C, B if you already copy the bass note. I think that's what it is. Um, also worth noting that rhythmically, when it comes back into the riff, it happens at the beginning with a second layer as well, that instead of going it goes one, two, on the G. So immediately after that section from the A, C, stop. One, two. And then we're back into it. It's just here. One, two. should tell you when that happens but it's usually after the chorus that you get that or when there's an entry of a new guitar part coming in over the top. The actual arrangement of the song is pretty simple. It uses that main riff for the intro and the first verse then we got a chorus. We play the riff again with that slight variation on the G chord playing on one and two. A couple of times around there is a little break. There's another verse, another chorus, then we go into the solo, couple of choruses and the job is done. It is a perfect pop punk song. Short, catchy, nothing overly complicated getting in the way of strong melodies. Even the solo here that we're about to look at it's memorable. It's a nice solo. You can hear the melody of the song kind of coming through there. You'd probably be able to sing the solo in your musical imagination, which is all, always the sign of a great solo in my mind. So let's get to a close up. Check it out. <laughs> okay, so that's the solo. Really simple. It's the top part of a G chord. Okay. No. First finger bar in the thinnest two strings, third fret. We're going to play the thinnest string, second string, open G string, back to the second.
second string, then third finger or little finger goes down the fifth fret of the thinner string. We do that same pattern, thinner string, second string, third string, second string. So. Then we do exactly the same sort of pattern really, but we're just playing the two strings together. Three times. Third finger goes down the fifth fret of the thinner string and then off again. So one and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. Okay, one more time those two bars, a bit slower. One and two. Now, again, real similar rhythm. Slightly different than we've got an upstroke. One. Third finger's just held down for a couple of extra beats. One and a two and three and four. Then we're sliding second finger all of the way up to the ninth fret on the third string. We're playing ninth fret, first finger in the eighth fret of the second string. Back to the ninth fret and third finger in the tenth fret of the fourth string. This is part of this sequence. One last time, nice and slow through the whole solo. So three, four. One last time, normal speed. I just know sometimes when I'm sliding up to the ninth fret there, sometimes my first finger is kind of following it along. I can't remember if that's happening on the original recording. It definitely feels natural under the fingers to do that. And I don't think it really matters that much. I really hope you enjoyed playing this song. Do remember if you want to play with the original that you have to tune down one semitone, but I definitely recommend spending some time doing that. Either use software to lift the original track up a semitone to say if you happen to tune down, or tune down and play along and try and absorb some of the vibe and the feel. It's very relaxed. Green Day, fantastic band for that. It's it's powerful and punky and full of energy, but it's still kind of relaxed and kind of cool and feels easy. So that's the kind of thing I feel like playing along with the original recordings really gives you a way of absorbing that kind of feel, the thing that is that you can't describe in music really. It's not like a learned thing where you can write it down. You can just feel it and practicing along gives you that feeling and I think that's an important part, especially if you're a beginner and you're new to this sort of stuff. Plan along with the chords in the simple with the simple power chords and just plan along with the recording will really get you in the mode for that. One last thing I want to mention here is that the guitar layers in this song are hard panned left and right. So one guitar is in one ear and the other guitar is in another another ear. Really interesting thing to have a listen to is if you, especially if you listen on ear pods or whatever, just take one of them out and listen to one guitar part, swap it over, listen to the other one, then listen to both of them together and see what parts are playing together, how they're kind of weaving, what, what are they using, what techniques are they using. If you're playing in a band or you're playing with another guitar player, it can be real cool fun to say, right, you're playing the one in the right speaker, I'm playing the one in the left speaker, let's try and play it. Because it really gives a different depth to the song than just having an amalgamation of the two parts, which if you're playing on your own, that's what you're going to do, right? You're going to mix the two parts together into one guitar part. But in a two guitar situation, definitely a real fun thing to explore. I really hope you enjoy playing this song. Let me know in the comments what other Green Day songs you'd like me to do lessons on. Of course, always appreciate you hitting that subscribe button, slapping me a like, and I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You all take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.